So how do we identify ourselves if we are actual missionaries to the Muslim world, to the Islamic world, to refugees, to immigrants, and uh, so forth? Well, again, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, it says very clearly, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, we're not to be ashamed of suffering as a Christian. We should glorify God in that name. Praise God that we're being, uh, being persecuted because of the name Christian. That's very clear in the scriptures. We identify with our Savior. We identify with His church. And we're bold about our testimony and our faith. However, in the Muslim world, Every Muslim has been taught that the, there's no separation between church and state, and that if you are, uh, uh, the reason why is because in their countries, they have what's called a ministry of religion that's an actual paid government position, and they basically disseminate the religious values or religious teaching they want their entire country to learn and know. For example, in Turkey, the, the, the Ministry of Religion will print what hadith they want their people in Turkey to learn and to know. So you can't go into every bookstore and find all of the, the volumes of the hadith. It is impossible to find that in the bookstores. But what you can find is what the Ministry of Religion, they want you to know. So they'll have 101 hadith, 1,001 hadith. And they will pick and choose what uh, the sayings of Muhammad or the actions of Muhammad that they want their people in Turkey to know. Um, now, if they actually uh, published the entire volumes and made it public in all the bookstores, people would read it and be disgusted because they're really disgusting uh, things that Muhammad said and did. But what I'm trying to say is, is that these people control religion from their ministries of religion so they can control the education of what's being taught in the madrasa, madrasa, uh, Islamic teaching schools, and all of the schools as well, because in the public schools, they're not, there's nothing such thing as a public school. It's all run by the government, which has the ministry of religion, so they, they push their religious curriculum. And so if a Muslim imam, a Muslim priest, is sent to Germany or America to, to, to preach uh, the, from the Quran or preach Islam, they are paid by the government. And the mosques that they preach in, in Germany, France, England, or America, that was paid by that government, by the Turkish government or some, somebody, whatever, Saudi Arabia or whatever uh, organizations deciding to pay for it, whatever uh, country. So there's no separate, separation from church and state. So what happens is, is that they're taught, well, well, of course, if a Christian is moving to an Islamic country and is or a Muslim country or working with refugees, or immigrants, and they're there focusing on them, they are an agent of that government. They're working for that government. They're working for America. They're working for Germany. They're working for England, France, whatever, or Armenia, whatever, um, what they would consider a Christian country. And they are being paid by that government specifically to propagate the, 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 their religion. And I've heard this countless times. They have these conspiracy theories that even the politicians in these Muslim countries uh, say, where they say, well, look, look, the missionaries are coming in and they're actually here as like CIA agents, which according to their thinking makes sense because if they're working for the government, there, there's a connection. All the government bodies or uh, entities are connected. And then they say, well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make the Muslims Christians. So when the Christian ar armies eventually invade our Muslim country or our, our Islamic country, that they will, um, they will have won all of these converts that will fight with them against our Islamic country or, or our Muslim country. So they're trying to divide our country and cause these divisions using religion because, re again, for them, religion and ethnicity, religion and government are intertwined. They're connected. So, if you're a missionary, uh, they're taught in every venue, in, in, in every way, using every medium, that a missionary means some kind of a, a, a secret agent working for the government to do bad things. So, uh, what does missionary mean according to the Bible? Well, it comes from the word apostello, which means uh, to send or and. It's basically in the, in the Bible, when Paul is a missionary, uh, Peter's a missionary, and you see the missionaries, they're apostles, apostles, missionaries, same thing. Missio just comes from the Latin. Apostle just comes from the Greek. So they're sent ones. They were sent with the mission on a mission. So uh, what do we say with this? What do, we, what do we call ourselves with all of this uh, background and, and, and taking this into account? What I do is I tell them what a missionary does who a missionary is, 
without telling them that I'm a missionary. And they all look at me and say, wow, that's amazing. Can you tell, what do you think about the Quran? What do you think about God? Why, what about the Bible? Then they begin asking me questions I want them to ask me. And let me explain to you how I do it. And this is what I suggest you do as well. So if you're coming to work in, in our ministry here, where I work in the Middle East, you'll be engaging with Persians, Kurds, Turks. And uh, when you meet them on the street, you can be very bold and you can say, hi, my name is Mike or Mary or whatever your name is. And you could say, I am from the United States. I'm from Germany. I'm from whatever country. And I'm a true Christian. Tell them what a true Christian is. I just did a video on that and compare it with what a cultural Christian or fake Christian is. After you explain what a Christian is, and that probably will involve giving your testimony and so forth, uh, and say, I am here today to meet you. God sent me here at this time so I could talk to you, Muhammad, so that I could talk to you, Aisha, that I could talk to you, Berfin, about what how God has changed my life and how God is love and how... Uh, the only way to salvation is through Jesus alone. That's what you do. And then say, well, well, so you mean you came to this country for that reason? Yes. I, and then tell them the, 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 how you were sent to the country by your church. Tell them, just be open, just be honest and say, look, and, and you can tell them, look, you know, in our country, there is a separation between church and state. State and the church don't work together. Our, there, there's no ministry of religion in our countries. We don't work that way. Everything's independent. Um, and that'll be the first time they've ever heard that. And you can say, look, God called me specifically to come and talk to you so that you would hear this good news. And uh, this is what I've studied. This is why I'm here, and I want to I want to tell you who Jesus is, and 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 then you can begin to tell them. You know, you can tell them. Uh, for example, I've heard you as Muslims that believe that our Bible has been changed and corrupted. Can I talk to you about why I believe this book is God's word? All 66 books, Old and New Testament, are trustworthy and the very word of God. And of course, when you say that, they'll never heard of 66 books. They won't even know what Old and New Testament is. Then you get to explain to them for five minutes what. The Bible really is. They think it's what's called Tevrat Zebur Injil. Those things are not even true. That's just a Muslim way of thinking of the Bible. Um, then you can explain to them what the, the true book is and the message of the book from the beginning to the end, following uh, whatever theme you want to, if it's the, the, the seed theme, if it's covenants, or how everything points to the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, whatever you'd like to do. And then you could tell them, you know, and I also came here to tell you, because, you know, I've heard that all you Muslims, you know, believe that we worship three gods. And I want to tell you that's not true. Can I tell you the truth about that? And then you explain to them the Trinity. And you can do this easily, quickly. It's not difficult to explain. Then they're going to, uh, then you can say, I've also heard that you Muslims believe that, uh, you know, you, you, when you hear that we believe Jesus is the Son of God, that uh, there's, this is a horrible thing. Let me explain to you what that really means. And what's going to happen once you tell them that you were sent to them to explain these things to them and then explain what what uh, the atonement is about the reason the sacrifice is important, the reason that uh, there was a need for a holy, perfect sacrifice because of our sin, because of our guilt and shame and all these things. Uh, they are going to have questions. And what you've already done is basically you said, well, I actually, what you actually did tell them, you just didn't use the word. You just said, I'm a missionary. And this is the message I've come here to proclaim. Um, but you didn't use the word missionary. You basically said you're a sent Christian to share your faith and show your testimony and how important Christ is to you and how he can also save them. If you explain that to them, there is no problem. They will ask you hundreds of questions and you've made a friend and you weren't fake uh, about who you are and why you're in their country or why, or why you are ministering to them in their community. They will know very well Ah, oh, this person, they're a religious person. They really have a, a strong conviction in their faith and belief. They, they know what they believe and they know why they believe it. And they, they feel so strongly about it that they came here to share. I remember one time very clearly, I was in a very bad area of Istanbul um, in the back streets of Aksaray. And I was uh, sharing the gospel on the street in these really bad kind of uh, really bad areas. And I remember this gr whole, I was with one other person and this group of about 10 young Kurdish guys coming up to us. 
and they see that we had Bibles in our hands, and they look at us and they, what are you doing here? What are you doing in our area? And we're speaking uh, Turkish, maybe Kurdish at that time. I can't remember what language. And they said, what are you, missionaries? And why are you doing this here? We don't want you when you get out. And, and, and really, they could have stabbed us. They could have done anything. We're in these back streets and nobody's around. And they, these like this group of guys come around to, to yell at us. And I look at them and I said, guys, I said, you know, we're not missionaries. I said, um, I, I came here to proclaim my faith and who Jesus is to you and your people. And then I gave an example. I said, you know, just like Turkey, you know, Turkey sends out people to, you know, uh, Germany and so forth. And they're, they're there and they're there to, to talk about Islam. I said, I was sent here, not by my government, but I came here of my own because I felt God wanted me to come here to talk to you even today about this subject. And, and I use the word tablih etmek. I'm, I tab, I'm, a, I'm a one that, that came to um, basically share my faith. And then you should have seen the look on these guys. They all looked at me and said, oh, you came here just to share your faith? Oh, wow. We don't even have that type of faith that we can share. So what do you have to say? Then their countenance changed. They are not angry anymore. At first they thought I was this bad missionary. And then I told them what I was actually there uh, for, which actually is the real Christian meaning of missionary. But then I told them in the way they could understand. And they, they said, okay, uh, so this is what you believe. And then they said, well, you, you're, you're better at your faith than any of us combined. We don't have any of this faith. And then I gave them Bibles. We had a good conversation. And then uh, we left and there was no problem. Now, that's just an example of one of the times that uh, I've had to deal with this in a more tense situation. But uh, the, the, the point is, is that you do need to be aware of their cultural as understanding of what missionary is and how they were taught about it but you also need to explain to them that that you actually are there as a sent one from jesus from the king to share to them that day this message of truth of the gospel and they are not going to come against that they're not going to think it's weird people love talking about religion in this part of the world so don't be afraid about bringing things up that boldly and that's the whole reason you're ministering to Muslims anyway. That's the whole reason you came. That's the reason you're engaging them on the street. That's the reason you went to their home. That's the reason you moved your family to the country was to proclaim these things. So be bold about it. And they're going to love that because then they know what you're about immediately. From that day forward, every time they have a conversation, they're going to say, hey, hey, did you read the Quran? So why don't you believe the Quran? Or why aren't you a Muslim? They're going to all, everything's going to have to do about Christianity and, and about religion and why this, why that. And that's why you're there. That's what you you want to explain, you want to tell and proclaim these truths, and you want to model what a true Christian is uh, before these people on a regular basis. So uh, be bold, tell them the truth, and uh, and God's going to open the, these doors for you to be bold, and His Word will go be honored uh, as it goes forth. So those are just a couple things that I, I uh, wanted you to know about how to present yourself uh, in the Muslim world, specifically if you're working with us uh, about uh, the last two videos, one about what a Christian is and then the idea of missionary, because these things will be really helpful for you to understand. But will also, if you explain them well, it'll help you to uh, be able to engage with Muslims and to uh, share the gospel very easily. So thanks for listening. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.